most important thing is the end product we're trying to shoot for. We want longevity on our columns. Uh, it, it can't be a concrete like a sidewalk that in 5, 10, 15 years will be uh, uh, destroyed or taken away. It's like it's got to last as a foundation. So we go for a real high strength concrete that has a real density to it so that it is not affected by uh, freeze thaw. And the key point is the accuracy of the mix. You can see this mixer here, it's on load cells. Just by putting my weight on this machine, we, we uh, weigh ingredients down to the ounce, actually. Uh, this measures by the pound when we're putting in our liquid ingredients, which I'll show you in a little bit. Uh, we go down to the, to the ounce. And uh, that's the key, that's the building block for this high strength concrete. Our stone, size to the, to the uh, particular size, good gradation, we need lots of various sizes from small to large, and then we have a, a sand that's specified. Again, these have to be kept in a certain temperature so that they, uh, uh, they work well and don't cool down the mix too much or heat up the mix, so that's why we try to maintain a certain temperature. As we move over to the mixer here, not only is the items that we use, the ingredients we use, important, the important is the sequence of the mix. As we introduce the various ingredients uh, into the mixer, it is so important to do it in the proper sequence. After the ingredients are uh, put introduced into the mixer, we have a certain time that is required for the mixing to have an appropriate mix. Again, all that is staged and, and uh, it's important to hit all those set points. After that, the concrete is discharged into forms. We have various models of products, various sizes, because we have various sizes of buildings. And uh, so each forming system is a little bit different in size. And uh, we put reinforcing steel that is uh, a, a, for strength reasons inside that it forms. And then the concrete is poured over those uh, reinforcing steel brackets. And at that point, they are moved to a location to where they set and are into a curing process that will uh, last for seven days. to show you something, how important this is. These were poured yesterday. We put curing pads inside of these cure bags. And if you stick your hand in here, you will find out they're, they're wet. It's warm and it's wet because the curing process we want to, to take a real short, long time, a seven day period, and we want it to come slowly so that the columns will come up to strength and be at 10,000 PSI concrete. And just to give you a frame of reference, a typical sidewalk, might be have 3,000 uh, PSI strength concrete and perma columns have 10,000 PSI. Okay. One of the most common questions we get after people understand that this is a very high quality concrete, it has a very smooth surface, resistant to frost, 10,000 PSI in strength. They want to know how these brackets are attached. People envision that maybe they go down this far. But if you follow this, it goes five foot long all the way down to the bottom. In the bottom, there's a sleeve. That sleeve is designed to receive an uplift anchor that will be attached by the construction crews when they get out into the field. That'll keep the, the column from being pulled out of the ground. It gives resistance to uplift. Taking a look at this, we call this a structural reinforcing bracket. It starts out with a quarter inch thick steel is formed and has a series of holes which we'll describe a little bit later here for attaching and connecting the, the various sizes of wood. This happens to be for a three ply eight inch column. And we make them all the way up to four ply uh, eight inch columns. You can see that these re reinforcing rods that are connected to it, they are a special weldable rebar. They are not just the standard rebar that you get out in the, uh, at a lumber yard or a, or a cement plant. They happen to be designed for welding because we have welds here at the bottom. And not only is this weld, if you can take a look at this, not only is this weld 
welded on here, it is actually, there's, there's a hole punched in this bottom layer and the rebar is inserted into that hole and butts up against this laminate. So this weld is not a butt weld, which is a much weaker weld, it's a fillet weld. And it makes, it gives us strength. As we're welding these in our factory, we do pull uh, tests on every batch that we run. And we actually take a big hydraulic ram cylinder and pull against that, and against the weld to see where we're at strength-wise and the, and the rebar invariably te tears here. So our weld is a lot stronger than the rebar itself. The coating that we put on here is a high quality powder coat process where it goes through a, uh, an acid etching bath and then we put the powder coat on and it's baked in an oven at about 375 degrees for 20 minutes. So it's a real high quality uh, uh, coating to uh, protect it. Another important uh, facet of the strength of our column is the wood to steel interface or connection. And this is an engineered joint connection. It was engineered at the University of Wisconsin Ag Department. And the positioning of the screws and bolts are an important ingredient as we uh, went through the testing process and we come up with the strongest configuration of bolts and screws. And a couple of ingredients here, we have uh, half inch grade five bolts in the center of the column. And then on each side we have four of these quarter inch by three inch wood grip screws. They're especially designed screws. They're grade five. They're a, they have a washer head on them so they don't damage the, uh, the paint as they're inserted in. And also it keeps the heads from being torqued too much and creating some fatigue. But in combination, the bolts and the screws make the strongest wood to steel connection that we could come up with. The bottom line here is we have the best of both worlds. We have a precast concrete column on the base of this column. Instead of treated wood that could deteriorate in uh, 30, 30 years or so, 20 years, we've had some deteriorate earlier than that. But we have the best of both worlds. We have precast concrete on the bottom, and we have the strong wood uppers that are laminated columns that are applied together with the, uh, with the bolt and screw interface connection here at the, at the metal bracket. That kind of outlines the whole story of the, uh, of the Permacolum product. <laughs>